Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, okay, so I'm going to clean up this thing in a minute, and you saw the title, so you already know what it is, but if you just want to see the cleaning, go ahead and skip to the time right here, but uh, I have an awesome, awesome story about how I got this. Um, okay, so I'm just driving around in the suburbs, and every once in a while when I see like a garage sale, something just inspires me, and I say, alright, I'm going to go check out a garage sale. So this came from a garage sale. Now I'm walking around inside their garage, you know, it's just a bunch of junk, and uh, I see this, all by itself, just sitting there. It's pretty apparent to me that the people who owned this thing thought this was just a CD player or something. They didn't really know what it was, because I was just, I was shocked to see it, because you don't see a Panasonic FZ10 3DO particularly often. Um, the ones you see more often are, this is the 3DO I got from um, my friend Daniel. This is the FZ1, the uh, front loader. It's a more common one. I have two of those. But I never had one of these. Uh, this, well, like I said, it is a 3DO, and I don't think they knew what that was. I think they had no clue. They just saw, right there it says, Compact Disc Digital Audio. And I think that they just read that and went, okay, it's a CD player. They thought this was just like a standalone CD player. And I, I just, my assumption is that's what they thought. Because I went ahead and I, you know, I grabbed it and I asked them, you know, like, you know, what, what do you want for this? And they're like, I don't know, make an offer. So I offered them a dollar. I offered them a dollar, one U.S. dollar, and they said, yeah, all right, fine, and I got this, <laughs> I got an FZ-10 for a dollar, because I, I, I seriously think they just thought it was a CD player, um, so, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean this thing up, and hopefully it works, it didn't come with anything, you know, it didn't come with any controllers, it didn't come with a power cord or video cables, but the beautiful thing about uh, the 3DO is that it uses just a standard, well, in this case it's a standard power cable. That the, um, the other one that I just showed you is actually hardwired. This one is not. That's a very standard two-prong power supply. And it uses, it's got composite out, which I won't use, RF out, which I won't use, but it also, right on the board, comes with S-Video out, which is awesome, so I'm going to use that. Now, as you can see, there's giant dust clumps and just dust on there, and I have no idea if this thing works, and if it does, man, that would be amazing. Um, it obviously didn't come with any games or controllers, but, uh, yeah, for a dollar, you can't possibly knock that. That's, that's an amazing find. It's one thing I kind of missed about the 90s was these console designs. You know, you guys might remember a while back, I, this is a, um, Amiga CD32 that I got from my friend Raymond. And, uh, looks oddly similar, doesn't it? You know? That was just something about the 90s, man. They just liked that type of design, you know? I don't know, but uh, I, I do think it's a pretty cool looking unit. But uh, hopefully it works, hopefully I can get it running, that would be fantastic. So um, in order to open this up, uh, I'm taking a look at it here, it's got an expansion port on the side, which I think it must come off somehow. Yeah, it just comes off like that, move that, I wonder what's that, what's that for? AV expansion. I think there was some kind of uh, VCD add-on or something you could put there. But uh, it's probably good to get that out of the way. And it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. They're all Phillips head. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. So once all our screws are out and we've got this piece of plastic out, uh, I think all we have to do is lift up, lift it up. So, you know, here's hoping that it's nothing more complicated. All right, lid comes off and underneath we see the system innards, which is cool. Um, yeah, it looks pretty complicated. I don't think I'm going to strip it down any further than this, unless I, you know, something's rattling around. That's never good. But, uh, yeah. Um, well, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lid, and I'm going to rinse this up with uh, soap and water and get all this dust and grime out of here. And I'll do the same for this piece of plastic. I've uh, rinsed these up, and uh, the case, obviously, is looking substantially better. All those dust clumps and everything is gone. And uh, so at the very least, even if the unit doesn't work, you know, it'll be a really nice display piece. But I'm going to move that out of here and let that dry off. Bring in the console here. Um, so what can we do? Because I don't want to strip this thing down because it looks a little too complicated. Um, there's a lot of dust on there, so what I think I'm going to do is take some compressed air and uh, just spray it in there and get as much dust out of the system as possible because it's always good to get dust out of there. So here we go.
wow, lots coming out of there. I'll probably keep doing that. Um, in addition to that, see if I can find that loose. No, well, that's not it. That's the, uh, I guess I could clean this up. This is the um, little light mechanism there. Yeah, I'll go ahead and clean that up separately, but let's see, I hear something. But I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I, I can't really get to it, whatever it is. So, I guess we're going to ignore it. You guys hear that? And of course you hear that. But uh, without really stripping it down, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to that, whatever that is. So, I guess I'm going to ignore it. But uh, the other thing I can do is I can clean up the laser assembly a bit. I can uh, take some Windex and a Q-tip, just go like this, get it wet like that. And uh, just lightly, very lightly, uh, clean the laser a bit, like that. And uh, take the other side and dry it off. So it should have greater probability of reading games. Then the other thing I can do is just kind of do a spot cleaning, like right around the laser assembly. Use that wet Q-tip and just kind of, you know, get some of that surface dust off. Be careful not to touch the laser again, now that you've filled the, laser, now that you've filled the Q-tip with dust. And, uh, yeah, look at that. Gross. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just do more spot cleaning here. And I'll probably use some more compressed air and get out as much dust as possible. Okay, so I tried to be brave and, uh, take this RF shield off. Uh, there's like five screws holding it in place, but then it also has resistance from the CD assembly here and a piece of tape. So I ripped a piece of tape off, and then unfortunately these metal things here you see had to be bent back towards the laser in order to get it up and out. And so once it was out, I, you know, sprayed some compressed air in there, cleaned it up a bit, but I still couldn't find that thing that was rattling around. I think that's underneath the motherboard somewhere, so I probably won't bother trying to get to that. Um, so I bent these back as best I can, and hopefully that doesn't affect performance. Uh, when you're doing this, I wouldn't actually recommend taking that part out. I'd, I'd recommend going as far as this and then not going any further unless it's not working. Um, so if it's not working, I may revisit this. I don't know. But anyway, uh, so now there's nothing else I can really do except kind of just do, you know, some more spot cleaning inside with compressed air and, uh, you know, Q-tips and stuff. So, uh, yeah, now I just wait it out until the lid is dry and then we'll put it back together. Okay, so I've let the case dry for a while and it looks a lot better. But uh, I think, I mean, there's, I just noticed now that there's some scuffs here that actually aren't dust. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get those out. And in order to do that, I'm going to use Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser, which is basically like a... Uh, a really fine sandpaper with a little bit of like bleach in it and uh, I'm just gonna do kind of a spot cleaning here this will be kind of difficult though because this stuff is really strong and it could take like these logos right off so I'm gonna have to be very particular about where I aim so the easiest one to do will be like right out here you can see right there there's that white little scuff there and I'll do my best to get it out here Put it like this back and forth Okay, and the scuff mark is gone. Now, of course, there's some dust and stuff there, but that's no problem. That'll clean up easily. Uh, so I'm going to have to go over these other ones and do my best to get them out and uh, see what I can come up with here. All right. Yeah, just got to be careful. Don't want to take off any logos. Some of those are actually scratches, so there's really nothing I can do about that. But... Uh, the scuffs I can get rid of, so I will. And uh, yeah, I think I'll go over that a little bit more, and then I'm going to rinse it off, because it's obviously very dusty now, and uh, then I'll show you what it looks like. I've, uh, As you can see, I've gone over it, and there's water on it now, but uh, the scuff marks are gone, so that's good. So now all I have to do is just let this dry, and uh, then we can finally put the system back together. Okay, so it's had time to dry, and now I think it is time to put the system back together, because, yeah, why not? So I'll move the lid out of the way. And we go back to the main board here. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is take this piece that we were cleaning earlier and just kind of pop that back in place. And uh, it's pretty simple. And then just take the lid and just fit it on top. It's incredibly easy to put the system back together. And uh, now, at this point, what we're going to want to do is take our side piece thing here and uh, just slip that on it, slip that on in. And then um, we've got two, four, six, seven screws, and your screw points are the three below here, the three up here, and this one right there. So, uh, yeah, just go ahead and put in your screws, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, I put the screws all back into place, and I just noticed something. On the bottom here, it says, um, 
system Panasonic FC-10 8999 used. Clearly, at some point, whoever, these people I bought this from at their garage sale actually paid 90 bucks for this, so it's kind of weird that they didn't know what it was. But uh, I should remove that, so what I'm going to use is an adhesive remover, and I'll just put that on there like this. Now, this is uh, something you can get relatively easily at any number of places. I got this one at uh, Target. And, uh, yeah, it's just really, really good at taking stickers off. So I'll just let that sit there for a second and eat away at the uh, adhesive, and then I will remove that and clean it up, and then we'll take a good look at the system. Okay, it's been a while, so I think I can remove this sticker. So I'll just peel it. Yep, pops right off. And uh, there's a little residual adhesive, so I'll just add some more adhesive remover and give that a second to kind of eat through the rest of it, and then take a paper towel and just kind of wipe it away. And uh, that gets the last of the adhesive off there, so that's good. Anyway, um, now back to what we were supposed to be doing, which is uh, taking a look at the system. And as you can see, it is substantially cleaner than it was, but uh, I think we need to improve it some more. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use some Pledge. Uh, this brings out a nice shiny coat to it, and it helps it resist dust. Uh, I used to use WD-40. I no longer do that, and some of my older videos I say to do that. Don't listen to older me. Use this. Use Pledge. Uh, do not use moisturizing Pledge. I'm told that that actually is kind of different and will kind of screw it up. But uh, yeah, all you do for this is you take a paper towel, not the same one with the adhesive stuff on it, and uh, spray some on there like that, and then just kind of wipe it down, and uh, yeah, just brings out a nice shiny little coat to it. Now, of course, I got some in there, but that's no big deal. Uh, wipe it along the plastic there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to um, wipe this whole thing down and then give it a little time to dry, maybe like 10 minutes or whatever, and then I'll show you what it looks like. It's had some time to clean up here and, well, to dry, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. It doesn't look perfect. Uh, there's still a couple of, like, scratches on there, but I can't really do anything about that. But uh, considering where it was and considering, of course, the price, <laughs> You know, I can't knock it. It uh, turned out, I think, pretty well. So uh, let's hope it works, because if it doesn't, it's going to be nothing more than a glorified showpiece. But uh, yeah, so now I'm just going to go ahead and hook it up, and uh, we'll try it out. Got the system all hooked up here. I've got it hooked up from uh, S-Video to a Component Adapter. Uh, so yeah, I'll try to get the best video quality out of this thing. Uh, now, on the, the system's kind of unique in that the power switch is on the side right there. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see if it powers up. And it does, so that's good. We'll take a look at the screen here and see what it does. Okay, well, that's good. It means the uh, menu, well, presumably the BIOS is working. Seems to be. I don't hear anything yet, but maybe it's because it needs a game or something in it. Let's see if it does anything. Uh, okay, insert CD, press X, storage manager. Never liked the 3DO controller. I don't see any. Oh, wait, I guess that's this button. This is the equivalent of what we would call the select button. That's cool. Um, yeah, we're done. I don't need any of this. So, press the X button again. Alright. Anyway, so I guess we'll try out a game now since we've got this much of it working. Um, so, pop that up in there. And the game I'm going to test is Gex. And this is a shout out to my friend uh, Daniel, because this is his favorite game for the 3DO, and this was once his copy of it. So, <laughs> I'll close that up, and uh, I can hear it spinning. So that's good. And it's got a green access light, which is kind of an old 90s idea. And you hear it doing stuff, but so far I'm not seeing anything. Oh, okay. 3DO, yeah. You continue to hear it. Yep, there it goes. It's reading. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> okay, and there it confirms that the sound works. So, uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I mean, wow. Yeah, <laughs> Really, when you think about it, I got this whole thing for a dollar, and that's, that's kind of mind-blowing. I mean, especially since clearly someone at you know, had purchased it for 90 at some point, so, wow, uh, I'm very, very happy that this thing works, that's just fantastic, so, um, while I don't imagine there are too many of you out there who actually watch this video for the purposes of cleaning up an FC-10, uh, I hope you learned how to do it, if you ever get your hands on one, and, you know, it 
advise you to go out to garage sales and try to find cool stuff because you never know what you're going to pick up. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching everybody.